Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Facebook Marketing U Africa slash Shopify Power Up Meeting Series. Um, Danny, I don't know if you want to do any other introductions or can we just take it from here? I'm quickly going to do an intro and then I'll hand over to you now. Um, awesome. So welcome to everyone. Welcome back to those who have been here yesterday and the day before. It's super cool to have so many of you here and I know that the number is just going to increase. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, we decided to host the Power Up Series to just try and help merchants, e-commerce merchants in South Africa just feel a little bit more prepared for Black Friday and Cyber Monday and what has become the busiest season in e-commerce worldwide. So if we can offer any help that makes you feel a little bit more relaxed, then we have met our goal. So before I hand over to the guys, um, I just want to go over some housekeeping rules. So you'll see that you guys are muted. Um, you're welcome to switch on your videos, but I also understand that it's a bit awkward when you, you are seen, but you, can't, you aren't heard. So completely up to you whether you want to switch on your cameras or not. Um, Please make use of the chat function. Um, so introduce yourselves, ask questions, make comments. If there's something that you're unsure of during the talk, let us know. If you have technical issues, not that I can help all that much, but um, at least I can try. So yeah, just use the chat function throughout. Um, and then how this is going to work is I'm going to hand over to Alison Brandon now, and then we are going to do a Q&A session afterwards. Um, obviously time depending and all of that. But so yeah, send your questions because I'll keep an eye on the chat and we'll make sure to ask them afterwards. Okay, cool. Then it is my great pleasure to introduce Brandon and Alyssa. They are my absolute favorite people in e-commerce and I always learn a ton when I listen to them speak. So I'm not gonna say much more than that. I'm going to hand over to you guys now. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Danica. And of course, well, a thank you to uh, you Africa and, um, and Shopify. This is actually our fourth um, Shopify meetup uh, and our second one online. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really fun to be here. And um, this is actually our first Facebook marketing um, Shopify meetup that we're gonna be giving to you, you guys. Um, we have a lot of value, a lot of data, uh, and so just bear with us as we get through that. Um, and yeah, thanks for being here. And uh, without further ado, you know, let's, let's just jump in and, and, and get started. Um, so just a quick overview of what we're gonna be talking to you uh, today. Um, as I said, it's gonna be a little bit short in the beginning, and then we're gonna go sh straight into what everyone's here for, the strategies, the tips and the best practices about what you guys can do to make sure that this festive season, this Black Friday, Cyber Monday is the best one that you've had yet. Um, so let's get into it. So before we begin, uh, we're just going to introduce ourselves. My name is Alistair. The other person you see over there is Brandon. We're from Honeywell, Honeywell Hi. Studios here in, in Cape Town, Southern Suburbs. Um, we started, uh, Brandon and I go back uh, way back ago, we go uh, from high school basically together. We've Four been, years, yeah. Yeah, we've been building uh, websites and e-commerce stores for quite a while now. Um, and yeah, we came here to Cape Town to study. Um, UCT Pearson got a background in information systems and information technology. Uh, and so it's really given us a, you know, a great understanding of the market. Uh, we've been able to, you know, understand the, both the theor theoretical aspects of uh, the industry, and then we were fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to apply those theoretical aspects uh, in first hand, you know, with the various clients and uh, businesses that we've helped throughout the years. Um, yeah, we've had a great time. Um, we understand that data is king. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna make that pretty prevalent in, today, in today's talk, uh, understanding how important data and targeting is uh, in order to ensure that you guys have the most successful uh, period of time for your e-commerce stores. And, and you know, just going forward, going forward, um, you know, within the next five years, you're gonna see some facts now that we've, that we've, we've pulled from some credible sources and, and reports 
uh, just to show you, you know, what's going on in the market. Uh, what's, uh, what's everyone doing? How's, how's it doing? Um, and yeah, just to close this one off, we are youthful, we're data driven, and of course, we're e-commerce ex experts. So jumping in, e-commerce in 2020. I'm sure everyone knows this year has been, you know, an unprecedented, crazy time. Um, you know, a lot of things have happened, a lot of changes have happened. Um, but one thing that's remained consistent that we think um, is obviously the potential of e-commerce here, not in, just in Southern Africa, but Africa as a whole and the world and worldwide. Uh, you know, we've seen a, a huge shift um, of people going on to e-commerce, not only for the benefits, you know, uh, of social distancing and, and being able to stay at home, but just, you know, other big corporations being able to have this lifeline uh, to pull them through this very, very difficult time. So, you know, some, some crazy statistics that, we, that we've seen, um, probably the first one uh, that we came, came across was the uh, market growth since January increasing 40%. This is a South African statistic from the, the online retail industry in South Africa 2020. It's a report published by research and markets.com. And they basically uh, said that, you know, the market here, the e-commerce market that is here in South Africa has seen a huge growth of 40%. Um, you know, we've spoken at uh, countless meetups, four or five meetups now. Last year, we, came, we, we, we always say, you know, the data is promising. But after this year, the data isn't just promising, it's incredible. So, uh, you know, it really is a time of unprecedented growth of uh, a lot of new users coming to the market. Um, and, you know, what that means a lot more opportunity for people like you and I to, to try and get out there and, and um, get our share, you know what I mean? Uh, a second, um, second really cool statistic we've got here is that the projected revenue um, of the e-commerce industry here in South Africa is 97 billion Rand by 2024. Uh, which, you know, I told Brandon that uh, stat yesterday or the day before, and, and he didn't think that that was possible. Uh, but it's true. Believe me, it's from Statista report. Um, and it's, you know, it shows that the, the growth in this market is not stopping. Currently, we're at, uh, you know, this year, we're, we're expected to um, have revenues of over 15 billion rand uh, in the industry. Uh, and to give you a comparison, you know, if we had to look maybe 15 years ago, uh, at the e-commerce revenue in South Africa, it was probably sitting at around 2 billion Rand. So we've had about a 700% increase in the amount of attention, you know, revenue users going into the market. Um, but with everything happening with COVID, uh, you know, that is obviously accelerated at an obscene amount, um, which is 100% great for people going into e-commerce or looking to getting into e-commerce. It just shows you that, you know, the market is there and uh, it's all about, you know, working smart so that you can make sure that your brand, whatever you're selling is get in front, getting in front of the right people. And uh, Brandon's going to get, take you through that. Um, but just hold on for that. We're getting there. The next awesome, uh, another great um, stat we found, and this was actually uh, at the end of April, Mark Zuckerberg had, Zuckerberg had a um, conference call with some of his investors and, and annual shareholders. Um, and he said at the end of April that over the previous 30 days, over 3 billion people had logged on to a, a Facebook service. Um, you know, that's more than a, qu a quarter of the entire world's population. Uh, you know, and if that, if that stat doesn't tell you that, you know, there's potential in Facebook, I really don't know what else can. Um, you know, there's so many people on Facebook, uh, I think 1.6 billion active daily users. Uh, you know, there, there's so many people for, for, for us to be able to reach. The market is there. It's all about how we can make sure we get in front of the right people. So what does that mean for you? Well, what it means is uh, e-commerce is hot. You know, we, as I've said, this industry is becoming more and more, um, more and more uh, 
interesting to people, uh, especially big businesses, small businesses. Everybody wants to get online. So you'll see a huge saturation in, in the coming uh, weeks, but if you can uh, weeks and months, but if you can uh, stick to a strategy, you can stick to a game plan, uh, and you understand the peripherals of your game plan, uh, and it's based on data. You know, as we are always uh, emphasizing, then I think you know you can grab your market share of an unprecedented time of growth. Uh, so buckle up um, and let's get ready. Awesome. So. Just going in before we get into the Facebook strategy, we're just going to, I just want to talk to you guys just a little bit about the user experience um, and the different types of channels uh, within a user experience that you can use to basically target your, your users. So, you know, the user experience is something that we think is extremely valuable um, when looking at, uh, at an e-commerce store especially when you know, you've got all of these different channels, omni-channel marketing, uh, you need to have a consistent and seamless user experience. Uh, and that's from any different stage of the user journey. So you know, if we did have to unpack a user journey, um, and I'm gonna do that in a second, it's all about you know, understanding the data behind each user at, different, um, at the different stages of the consumer journey. Uh, you know, one of our favorite quotes, um, is by Sherlock Holmes. He says, it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. And you know, this, 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 this is uh, especially true when you look at e-commerce and making data back decisions. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's not about what you think is correct. Surely you, you've got, you know, a, a great understanding of your market and your, um, audiences, but what is that understanding based on? Is it based on data or is it based on opinion? If it's based on opinion, you know, you might not see as much growth and as much, uh, you know, solid, um, solid decision making that can actually bring in more value uh, as opposed to basing your decisions on data. Um, so when, when we actually look at, you know, marketing channels, because the purchase windows are very, very narrow, you know, data collection is key in order for you to drive sales. And I'm going to get into this now and, and it'll make a lot more sense when I show you this next, um, this next diagram over here. But this is essentially what we call the user journey. You've got four stages of the user journey. Some people like to, you know, there's, you can have more stages within each one, but to keep it simple, we've broken it down into four stages. You've got people who have been never exposed to your business, and you can assume that this is the largest base of the, your customers who have never been exposed. These are the people that you know you uh, don't know that your brand exists yet; they haven't seen it, but you know that if they did, uh, you know they would be interested, and you could maybe convert them. So that's always where we start. We start at the people who have never been exposed to your business. Then you've got the newly exposed. These are people who are, you know, maybe seen an ad of yours once or twice. Maybe they've interacted on an Instagram post. They've given you a like or a comment or something, but they've taken it no further. Those are the newly exposed. <clears throat> then you've got the interested people. These are people that maybe, you know, from the newly exposed, they've decided, okay, I'm interested. I want to go and I want to learn a little bit more about your brand. They go onto your website, they click around, uh, but, you know, then they leave. And that's the next stage. And then we've got the customer, the people who were interested. And after a certain amount of marketing, after a certain amount of work from our part, we've now turned them into customers. And this is what we want at the end of the day. You know, we want to take people who are never exposed and we take them to the customer level. Now, how do we do that? We do that with knowing the data and taking relevant actions. So we'll start at the bottom here. Never exposed. The data set you're going to be looking for of course, your competitor audiences. So who are your competitors in the market? Who are, are brands out there that, you know, are basically have similar or the exact target audience that you guys are looking for, for your brand? Start targeting those people, you know. Um, it's anyone basically that aren't in these three uh, stages here. So, you know, it's, it's a huge market that's never exposed. A lot, uh, you, there's a, a lot of people you can, uh, target here and you know as we said in those previous stats 1.6 billion active facebook users every day uh you know 
those people are just waiting to be exposed to your business. And Brandon's going to take you through a strategy on how to ensure that you get, you know, you, your brand in front of these people. Cause at the end of the day, these people are the ones where, where your, 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 your funnel starts. Uh, so yeah, going on to the newly exposed, you've got your social marketing pool, people who, you know, have engaged with you, as I said earlier on. So maybe they've liked, liked a, a, a post of yours or they've um, followed you, uh, commented on a post. So this is, this is the kind of data that this data set here is basically where on Facebook, where we're going to be targeting, um, you know, users who you think are already engaged in your brand. Um, moving on from that, you've got then the people who are interested in your brand and the data set that you get from there are of course your on-site cookie uh, data, you know, people who are actually coming, coming onto your store and you can get that data very easily, you know, just from a uh, Google analytics tag or, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, um, you know, even your email databases, people who have signed up to your newsletter, these are people who are interested. They might not have bought yet, but they're interested. Um, and, the action that you do there is you, you, you want to continue to build this list because this list, this is your email marketing list. This is the list um, that you can essentially, you know, create remarketing pools from. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, you've gone onto a website and then I'm sure you have, I'm sure you guys have, everybody's experienced this. You go onto a website, uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes later, after you've been on the website, you start seeing ads pertinent to the, 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 the brand that you were just on. These are people, you know, that have been on the site. We know they've been on the site because we've got their data from the cookies. Google Analytics has tracked that and we can create audiences around that that we can then feed specific value-driven data based on the journey. So the whole point of this is to understand each level of a customer's journey and then action content and advertising that's relevant to each point of the consumer journey. So, you know, you'll see uh, each each stage basically has to have a marketing task associated with it. Um, you know, different tactics in order to move a consumer up from one level to the next. Um, so, you know, for the never exposed, your marketing tactic would be to dr drive unique reach and frequency. So frequency is quite important. You know, the more someone gets exposed to a brand, the more subconsciously they start to affiliate themselves with it. Uh, you know, I could go on and on and on about retention tactics and, you know, the psychology behind frequency in marketing. But at the end of the day, it works. You know, we've seen this countless times. Um, and basically, you know, it's all about getting yourself in front of these people and just reaffirming that you're there. Just, just giving that little knock on the door. Hey, I'm here. My brand's here. We can provide value. We can provide you with something. Um, so, you know, give us a chance. Uh, for the people that are then newly exposed, you know, you want to drive the brand engagement. Again, it's just another form of frequency. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, they're engaging with your content on socials. So, you know, um, basically doing whatever you can just to, you know, create a conversation, um, have value in a form of a post. Value or, propositions and stuff. Yeah. yeah, value propositions that can just drive people's not only interest in your brand, but just, you know, looking to engage more with you. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, with social and e-commerce and all of this, it's, it's all about building a community and providing value to that community. And what we're showing you here is your community split into four different segments because they are, every consumer of yours is at a different stage in their purchasing uh, uh, funnel or purchasing behavior. Um, and so you really have to cater for that. And this is how you can be extremely excess, successful on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, uh, or even Google, Google ads as well. Uh, but that will leave for another day. Um, and then for those who are interested in your site, you obviously just want to drive those people to the site. So, you know, you, these people are already interested in your brand. How can you get them back onto your site? So this is, off, this is often the remarketing pools. You know, people have been onto a product. Uh, you can feed that product back to them on Facebook uh, or on Google affiliated sites. Um, 
in order to get them back onto your site. So usually we, here we give, you know, a great uh, value proposition or a call to action, uh, something like 10% off your first purchase or, um, yeah, stuff like that. 10% off your first purchase, uh, orders over a certain amount, receive something. Uh, it really is a give or take. Um, and a value proposition, you know, is something like 10% off your first order or, um, Give me some other ones here, Brad. Some other value. Look, it's look it, your value proposition. Your value proposition is just giving back to the customer. Whether where whether it be a ten percent off discount for signing up to a newsletter, or whether it be a ten percent off discount for returning, or just you know an extra bit of value here and there. The whole idea is to make an exchange with you and your customer. You want them. You want to give value back to them as much as they're giving to you when they purchase your product. It's not a one-way street it's definitely a two-way street yeah um that's a great point you know it's it's not as simple or rarely is for someone to just see one of your ads for the very first time and then immediately purchase that you know as 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 much as you want that to be the case as much as we want that to be the case at the end of the day it really isn't the case the case is they'll see the ad they'll be oh that's interesting and then they'll keep scrolling but We've had that small little piece of engagement and that little piece of data gives us a lot more insight into that consumer. We can then, you know, say, okay, they're, they're newly exposed, but we just need to nudge them a little bit. We just need to give them that little bit of something to get them from newly exposed to interested. Once they're interested, you know, then, then we're going we're gonna to give them some, some really cool uh, value or propositions or something to get them to the customer level. Because this is where you want, right? This is where we make money when the customer purchases. This is where you want all of your users to be. But that's not, that's not the case. The users, they start here and it's your job to make sure that they get from here all the way up to there as quick and as seamlessly as possible. So, and moving it's, on. And it's never really, it's, ne it's never ending. It's mm. never ending. It's a constant process, yeah. So, you know, this is, this is something that you can actually automate. So, uh, you know, for the, for the never exposed, you would have ad sets uh, that are, that specific goal is to drive unique reach and frequency. You'd have ad sets for, for, for people who are newly exposed to drive brand engagement. Um, this is really, you know, it, this is really the professional way of doing marketing, especially, uh, you know, online e-commerce marketing, because, uh, you know, we, we have data for every level here, um, which is, you know, it's, it's really great. And we can base our decisions on that data. Um, so, you know, moving on, the last point is obviously customer, it's to drive sales. Like I said, that's the main point here is we want to drive on-site sales. And another point here that I didn't put um, is, obviously you've got people you want to drive sales, but you could also do, you know, cross selling, um, upselling. So that's also here a, a marketing point here is, you know, once you've got the customer, it's all about retaining them. You know, uh, they might buy once, um, but you know, you don't want just one, one time purchases. You want recurring purchases. You want that brand loyalty. There's people who are just going to come back and back and back. And so your, your marketing doesn't stop here. Here is where you get on-site sales. You know, you got to follow up to get your reviews. Reviews are huge. You know, you want to get people to review your brand uh, and give their opinion to the community. And that, that, you know, that'll in turn increase the trustability of your brand and would increase your sales. So there's so many different factors that go into each different stage here. Um, but the overarching, the overarching theme is the same. Understand the user journey and market uh, content and value to the user at every stage of that journey in order to move them up to the next level. That's really all we wanted to, you know, make sure that you guys would understand going into this. Um, and, you know, I'm also going to show you, um, sorry, before we get into that, which channels should you use then? Because obviously there's so many ways to get yourself in front of your customers, right? There's so many, you know, channels that we could use. There's SEO, there's, you know, online display ads, there's video ads, affiliate marketing, reviews, 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you get the point. There's just there's so much out there. So, you know, what do we then, where do we put our, um, our efforts and our resources into? Obviously, here we're here to talk about Facebook. We think Facebook works. Um, you know, with 1.6 billion users a day, you know, it seems like a no-brainer to me. You know, as long as you can work smart is what I believe. So it can be very overwhelming, but not if you work smart. If you do your research into the industry, if you understand your competitors, and more importantly, if you get to know your customers, you know, you can really... Um, you can really find success and basically carve out your little line um, in, in, through all of this madness and be able to, you know, create your little niche, get your brand, your customers, and, you know, become, uh, make a success out of it. Um, so, yeah, um, pick channels that suit, suit your customer at every stage of their journey. Um, and I'll show you how we do this uh, with, with, with our clients is uh, like, you know, all our cards out on the table here, we're going to give you as much value as you can. So when we ask these questions, the questions we've just asked now for our clients or people that, you know, small businesses that we're trying to help, when we uh, uh, look at it, this is how we would understand the UX journey and we would play to that. Um, so we would come up with a marketing objective. What, are, what, what do we want to achieve? Okay. We want to achieve first and foremost is we want to grow the footprint of the brand. These are the people who have never been exposed right? Or people who are newly exposed. These, this is your biggest area of opportunity. It's that big base at the pyramid, right? We want to make sure that we put at least 60% of our budget, monthly budget into these people, because these are new customers that we are just waiting, uh, uh, you know, people who are just waiting to find brands like ours. Um, so we want to drive unique reach and frequency, and we want to drive brand engagement. So how do we do that? First and foremost is obviously social. We're going to look at Facebook and we're going to show you guys our strategy, our very own strategy on how we approach something like this and the strategy that we use to get in front of people and make money. Uh, furthermore, we're going to look at, uh, we're, we're not going to touch on SEO today, but it is a way, you know, to get uh, organic traffic. I'm not even going to let Brad talk on this because he would just go down a rabbit hole and we would be here for hours and hours. But SEO, you know, if you can get SEO right, it's a form of free organic traffic, um, and it's perfect for those ne never exposed and newly exposed customers. Um, so just look into, you know, doing that sort of thing, but we are gonna take you through the social, which is, we think, the most important. So, you know, look into these aspects. Obviously, people know about email and messenger. Content is gonna be key here, especially if you're doing SEO. Uh, especially with social as well. I'm going to take you through uh, the importance of content and what kind of content we think works best. Um, furthermore, second marketing objective is obviously to drive e-commerce sales. And the audience here is going to be your interested parties as well as your customers, the two top, two top sections of the pyramid. Here, what is our task? We're looking to drive quality traffic to the site and drive on-site sales. Here we have different types of tactics. Obviously, again, we've got social, Facebook. We can do different types of targeting. Brad will take you through that. Then we've got peer-to-peer. -peer. This is more like uh, word of mouth, um, but I also see it as reviews. So people talking about your brand online, you know, a real great way that I've seen peer-to-peer -peer marketing is um, people or brands, sorry, focusing on their, um, their logistics and the way that their logistics is presented. So when someone receives a package, um, you know, if your package is really well branded, if it's really well, um, you know, packaged and you've, you've put some, um, sorry, I just got distracted by chat there and you put some effort into, uh, yeah, I've completely lost my place now. Anyway, peer-to-peer -peer no marketing is, Take is, a great, is a great, uh, great way. Reviews. Uh, oh, yeah, I was talking about packages. Packages. Okay. So if you have a, a really great, well-packaged um, product that arrives at a consumer's door and they're super stoked with the packaging, you've written them a nice, um, a nice handwritten note saying, thank you so much for this, this order, blah, blah, blah. Um, you've packaged it in nice, pretty, if it's a girl brand, you've packaged it in a nice... Uh, 
I don't know, pink, pink uh, tissue paper with ribbons and stuff. People are going to, they're sociable. People are going to see that. And they're going to like, wow. And they're going to take a picture of that. They're going to put it on their Instagram story or on Facebook. And it's a, another form of peer to peer marketing. This is for people, you know, people will see that they'll be interested or a customer will see that and they'll say, wow, I didn't know they changed their packaging. Let me get one, something like that. Um, Could I just add one more example there? Sure. Is let's say, for example, you know, you, your packaging for your product is recyclable and you're just delivering it to these customers, but you're not letting them know that, you know, you gotta, you gotta give them as much information as possible when it lands to their door. Hey, there's a note on your package. Hey, I'm recycled. Uh, this plastic is recycled. Don't worry about it. We think about the environment, things like that will help people will, will imprint the idea of your brand and what, what your brand stands for in front of your customers directly, even things like personalized messages in your packaging. Hey, thank you for shopping for us. Thank you for supporting us. You know, uh, just so that you can exclusively get some value back, turn this card around and you'll get a X percent or whatever, whatever off or free book or whatever. Just go onto this link, things like that, you know, engage, get engagements, you know, start communicating with your customers. Yeah, Sorry. that's a great point. <laughs> Very great point. And that's, you know, plays on the peer to peer marketing. Um, and, you know, furthermore, this is just an example is to drive wholesale um, sales. Uh, we would obviously use different content, but, you know, the, the, the peripherals of it are the same. You've got an audience that you're looking to target. You've got a task that you're looking to do which is increase brand awareness and drive footfall. If it were a wholesale brand that, or, you know, a retail brand that's both online and in other stores. And you do that with, again, we can do social, of course, and then there's outreach and your own, own channels, which might be, you know, a, a website that has a form on it. So something like that. Um, but this is how we would approach, you know, a brand if they had to come to us and they say, okay, we, this is our marketing objectives. Um, how are you going to do it? how are you going to um, allocate your budget? Uh, give us a plan. This is, this is what we would show them. Kid you not. This is all our cards out on the table. This is how we would look at it from a high level point of view. And then we would take this and we'd go into the strategy that Brandon's going to take you through very, very soon. But before we get into that, um, a, a very important aspect of uh, what we're, what we're doing here is content, you know, uh, valuable content, but more importantly, we think is, um, you know, video content, the importance of video. Uh, it, it's insane. The, the engagement metrics that we see, uh, you know, uh, when an ad has a video compared to just an image with text, you know, I think the importance of video is really, really underestimated, especially in markets like South Africa, um, where we are a little bit behind everyone else, but, I do think we need to step up and be there. Um, you know, we've got Facebook native videos having an 86% higher reach than similar content on YouTube. 54% uh, of people wanted to see more video content from a brand or business that they support. Uh, and, you know, for, add to that, uh, pip uh, people typically only read between 20 and 28% of the words on your website. People are lazy, you know, they want to watch a video. Um, and, you know, people will often, you know, put out these huge marketing campaigns, but they'll only focus on, on, on text or, 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 or an image. And then they'll ask themselves, why am I not doing well? Why are my campaigns not doing well? Well, that's because, you know, majority of the people on Facebook are engaged in videos. And if they're not on videos, they'll scroll past something uh, that's just got a simple image with a little bit of text. It's not, it's not pulling their attention in. You must remember, it's all about attention. It's attention game. If there's 1.6 billion users every single day on a Facebook-related marketing channel, you, you've, you've got to realize that there are probably just as many, probably not just as many, but a lot of businesses trying to get their attention. There's people just like you, just like me, trying to get their share of the money floating around Facebook. So how can you make sure that you're successful? Well, it's all about getting that attention. It's an attention economy. You've got to make sure that you, you catch someone's attention within five seconds of them either looking at your ad or your video. Um, 
So just, you know, going back to these stats here, this was uh, from Agora Pulse, um, which is quite a, quite a reputable firm. They found this study. Uh, this is from HubSpot. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with HubSpot, um, as well as the Nielsen Norman group who came up with these stats. Uh, you know, all data backed. Uh, if you want, you guys can shoot me a message and, and I'll, I'll, I'll gladly share all of these reports with you because there's so much more data in here that uh, I know that you could find interesting, uh, but we just didn't uh, obviously want to put all of that in front of you. Um, but, you know, brands go a step further now. Um, Shopify has gone a step further now. It's not just about video anymore. It's about augmented reality and virtual reality. I'm not sure if, if you guys have seen the release of the iPhone 12. Um, if you've gone onto the iPhone 12 uh, landing page on apple.com, if you haven't, I suggest you do because it really shows the, um, you know, what, what, what standard, uh, what professional standard these e-commerce companies are putting out there. They've got videos, they've got, uh, uh, they've got so many different aspects on their, on their landing page for one product. You know, it just goes on and on and on. And at the bottom, They've got an, an, an augmented reality, um, an augmented reality section where you can actually, you know, interact with the phone in front of you, you know, with 3D. Uh, it's it's incredible, and 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 you know, Shopify, we actually they have the the ability to have that sort of content on their platform now natively. So you know, whereas we're looking now only into video at this stage you know, more advanced markets and people out there who have been in the e-commerce game a lot longer than us and who have industries where the e-commerce revenue accounts for 20% of online or of retail sales, they're looking even further. They're going beyond video now. They're going into uh, spaces that, you know, people can only dream of. But do yourself a favor, go and look at the iPhone 12 uh, landing page and just see, at, uh, just see the professional standard uh, of you know e-commerce and user experience design, and you'll really see what we're talking about uh, and the importance of it. But at the end of the day, we're here for Facebook, right? You need a strategy, you need a game plan, and you need to put in some work. So Facebook, we know, works, right? It works, and only if you're smart about it. Uh, and now I'm going to hand over to Brandon and he's going to take you through the exact strategy that we would use uh, and the exact campaign, you know, how we would, uh, you know what, I'll just let Brad talk about it. Brad. Cool. Perfect. I'm happy to step in here. Just to close off um, on the one point that Alistair had, one of the best tips that we can actually give you, especially since we're all in South Africa, we're all in an emerging market right now and we're all finding the groove and we don't really know where to look. So the best tip I can give you in that aspect is keep, keep your eyes peeled on the established economy practices. The biggest businesses out there in the world, how are they executing their campaigns? You know, it's more than just our uh, um, high price products and good marketing or a brand that slaps their name on a product and pushes up the price. You know, there's marketing involved, there's design involved, there's all of these user psychology points that are involved that actually impact their conversions. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Facebook marketing. Thank you, for Al Thank you, Alistair, for a great first half of our talk. In my half, I will be showing you our Facebook targeting strategy that you can use today that doesn't require you to hire someone or pay for a third party research tool. We'll be diving into a strategy that can be implemented immediately with a moderate budget. We will show you a strategy that you can use today and helps get you to understand the importance and power of data backed decision making in e commerce. So it's the next slide now. Okay, so the strategy. We're going to be talking about one of our key strategies for Facebook marketing that we've tried and tested yielding quick results. This strategy is based purely off making informed data back decisions to guide you and has been built in a way that you can successfully implement without the use of third party research tools. That's right. All you need is this strategy and a moderate testing budget to begin. And the key to the strategy is testing. Testing what works 
and scaling it. The data we retrieve from the tests will guide us on what works and what doesn't. We are going to cover a lot in a small amount of time. If you can execute this strategy correctly, you will not only be amazed at the results, but you will also be proud that you achieved it yourself, all whilst learning a whole lot in the process. A video will be available to watch, so you can always come back again to refresh your memory. Cool. So, before you begin, choose a product type that you are offering. The idea is to find what works best in terms of traffic and conversions and then scale it. Remember, we're using data to drive our actions. We're not going off gut feel or opinions. Data is king. Remember that. Let's say, for example, your online store sells dog accessories, dog collars, dog treats, dog toys, and dog clothes. You would pick one of the product types to be the main item of the campaign. Let's pick dog collars. If you already have been selling online, which I assume you, you, you have, especially during lockdown, look at the data on your best selling product types and pick one. That already gives you a head start in the strategy. So now, a frequently asked question is, what budget should I begin with? A lot of people struggle to find the right answer. We say, keep it moderate, find what works, and focus the rest of your efforts and budget on that. For your age groups, we want to aim for a broad range. The reason for this is because a bigger audience will help Facebook optimize the campaign more efficiently. Facebook's algorithm now really works. It's intertwined so well with the way you manage your campaigns. So it always helps you get the reach to the best customers. Campaign budget optimization is a big thing for Facebook right now where they actually help optimize the budget for your campaign to make sure you're spending the right amounts just to get yourself in front of the right audience. The reason, so like I said, for your age groups, you want to aim for a broad range. The reason for this is because a bigger audience will help Facebook optimize the campaign more efficiently, allowing you to be able to look at a high quality set of data that you will use to make more decisions down the line. Yeah. Okay. So just, sorry, I just wanted to add here, um, you know, as we've said from the beginning, how important data is, the reason why we go so broad at the beginning is so that we can get a whole bunch of data. We want as much data as possible. So if you go like, you know, a lot of people will say, okay, 18 to 65. Okay. That's, that's way too broad. You know, our, our customers are probably, you know, 25 to, to 32, just as an example, but leave it broad in order to optimize it better, get the data and then optimize afterwards. Um, yeah. Look sorry. at the end of the day, you don't know for certain exactly who your customer is. You can obviously think, uh, I sell shoes, my customer is going to be the youth, uh, you know, sneakers, things like that. But you don't know, there is someone who is 50 years old, keen on your product because they want to look youthful. And so they are looking for your type of product, but they can't find it because you optimize it for, you didn't optimize it for their age group. Okay, so now the second part of detailed targeting. Less is more here. We only want to use one interest per ad set each interest being different and each interest relating to the product category you have chosen to market. We're going to pick large audience interests for our ad sets. We're looking for interests that exceed uh, an audience amount of 1 million and more. We don't want to use small interests. We're not aiming for the small niche groups. We want a big audience. At Honeywell, we tend to look for audience sizes around 1 million to 20 million. Okay. So in this example, we've chosen dog collars. We should look for broad audiences like dogs, pets, and dog lovers. The bigger your audience size, the cheaper your ads will be to deliver, and the more broad of an audience Facebook has to choose shoppers from. Remember, you're working with Facebook along this entire journey. They're there to help you. They also want you to make money because they make money off you too. So it just makes sense. Now the next, next part. Here we have devices. Uh, here we have which devices to target, which placements should you choose, and the conversion window that you'll be looking at before you kill the campaign. In other words, 
Oh, sorry. In other words, the campaign will have a start and end date, seven days. And you'll be looking at one day's range to view performance and make adjustments. And depending on the success of the campaign and its performance so far, you could be looking back at the previous four days to make even more data uh, decisions down the line. Okay, so ad creative. Video ads are what works in the modern age. Alistair has even spoken about this briefly in his half. People on social media can be lazy to read, so instead they watch videos. More and more video content is surfacing on social media, and I'm sure we're all aware of this now, especially during lockdown. And then we get your ad copy. Keep your copy simple including a clickable link at the bottom of your ad copy can also improve your click-through rates. Even emojis here and there, or you know, mention a problem that your product solves in the first sentence, and then you can catch on the rest of the value or content after. Yeah. Okay, so, so the next one. Sorry, Brad, here is actually a recommended here. column layout that, um, oh. Sorry, I just also wanna add here, um, we put here that the first five seconds of the video should hook up your attention. So remember how we said that this is an attention economy. Um, 1.6 billion active users, you've got to give them something unique or you've got to give them some sort of value in that first five seconds. Or if you're using images, which we don't recommend, um, make sure that that image pops, it catches the user attention. Because if you don't, your ads won't be successful, guaranteed. Uh, the same with keeping the ad copy simple. You know, a, a big, big uh, part that we didn't put in here, besides using emojis and highlighting benefits and stuff, is including social proof. So remember that peer-to-peer -peer tactic that I said. Include some social proof into your ad copies. Uh, as an example, you know, you got a great review last week from a customer. Um, use that review, that review title, in your ad copy. I've seen plenty of 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 um, businesses do this and it just reaffirms that trustability factor um, and that this that obviously plays into conversion rate optimization which we we've been we've we've gotten into in a previous um, meetup but you know it's, it's these small things that make a really really big difference okay so I just want to take a second here Joanna asked a question Brandon I thought you had to run an ad for three days or more you mentioned two days am I misunderstanding you okay so for let's say for an example, a platform like Google Ads, you need time to roll out your campaign. Google needs time to understand exactly you know, what your campaign and ads are about. Facebook is different in the sense where once you start, uh, once you start running a campaign and they've already scanned through and it's eligible, in order to understand if it works, they start putting it out to the audiences that, you, that you've aimed for. They start pumping it out there. So what you wanna do is after the two, you wanna take those two days, as soon as your ad is approved and you'll immediately start beginning to gain traction and you'll notice this, that's what you wanna keep your eye on in these two days. It's so crucial because this is how you know whether or not your campaign is a make or break. Okay, so onto the next slide, we actually give you a recommended column layout. Here is a column layout that we recommend so you can see the most important data. Feel free to screenshot this now or pause the video if you aren't watching live. It is good to have the most important metrics in front of you whilst you analyze your data and make decisions. These metrics aren't complicated metrics. They're easy to understand and you can already immediately derive some value from reading it. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, analyzing your ads. The first one to two days of running the ad sets, we're not looking for sales. We're looking to see if the product type that we have chosen has traction. Always look at the current day when you are testing, i.e. today. If you're scaling, you can look back at the last four days, but we'll go into the scaling a little bit down the line here. There are some very important metrics to keep your eye on in order to understand exactly what is going on. Facebook recently removed their relevance score and added in a few new metrics to replace it. Quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking. These metrics will provide insights into how changes to your creative ad sets, your audience targeting, and your post-click engagement can impact your ad performance. So keep an eye on that. And it's interesting, 
um, because some of these Facebook metrics can actually tell you, uh, you know, some uh, can tell you data or, or pain points uh, on your website. You know, as we put there, that a high cost, a high um, cost per ad to cart ratio and a low, uh, you know, cost per click means that something on your store is driving away interested customers. Um, you know, these are very, very simple metrics, um, but if you combine them, they can give you invaluable data and by invaluable so, i mean it's so valuable that it's invaluable yes you know I mean? it's about it's about reading in between the lines it's literally about reading in between the lines combining the data you look at to make decisions like a high cost per ad to cart and a low cost per click means that people are clicking your ads and you know your ads are affordable so that you've got a lot of audience that can actually you know you can afford for a lot of people to click on your ad but they're landing on your site and they're not converting you know, there's something either wrong with your checkout process or you're not giving enough value back to your users to convince them to purchase the product or make that sale or, you know, sign up for that newsletter form, things like that. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next one. So we actually have a mini cheat sheet here that you can use to guide your journey through data analysis of, of your ads. There's definitely, you know, there's so much more than this. There's always so much more to look into, but I promise you now, as you execute the strategy and you are learning along the process, you'll begin to piece together different metrics in order to answer different questions. Like in these cases, you can understand whether or not your ad creative is the issue or you have a poor performing audience, you know, and obviously if you're not receiving any purchases or no ad to carts, kill the campaign and start it over again. Remember, we're dealing with product types here of different product types in your brand. We're trying to find what works with the data that we get back from executing these types of campaigns. And, you know, we've seen, you know, we picked a product type before and it's immediately worked, but we've also picked, you know, one, two, three, tested with the one, failed, the two was successful and the three was very successful. It's all about testing and figuring out exactly what works, finding yep. out exactly how you can connect with your customer and understand them better. The whole game of e-commerce and the main focus is your customer. Yep. Like that's that. Okay. And data. Cool. And data, so, but you use the data to understand your customer and things mm. like that. So this okay. is really interesting. I think this is probably the most valuable slide that we have here. Um, Cause it really just, it, 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 it not only just gives you a little bit of a cheat sheet in, in analyzing your ads, but it, it gives you a framework for how to approach analyzing your ads and how to understand the data. So if you have a high cost per click or a higher ad to cart uh, ratio uh, to get, and that's coupled with low quality rankings or the, your engagement rate, then it's your ad creative. That's the problem. You, you know, you aren't grabbing people's attention. Just as we said, it's an attention economy. Uh, if you have a low or medium add to cart ratio with a high cost per click and a, and a high quality ranking, then you have a poor performing audience. Your targeting is incorrect. You need to go and reevaluate your targeting. Look, you're going to, you're going to have to test a few things. You're going to have to put yourself out there and you're going to have to spend a little bit of money. But if you can get it right, and if you can get it to the point where everything's working, that's when you scale. And that is when you can really make quite a bit of money we're thinking we've built this strategy with you in mind the fact that you're at this stage where you might not fully understand the importance of data you don't have the budget to go and hire specialists to go and execute campaigns like this for you so you're looking for a strategy that you can implement today or whilst learning everything about the platform and this is how you can do it. This is a strategy that you can implement today and be in time for Black Friday, Cyber Monday with enough data to understand exactly who your market is and, you know, pumping those campaigns and scaling those ad sets to target them so that you can gain the most during this festive season, not even Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, New Year's, you know, these are, this time of year is so, so amazing because you can actually get the highest quality set of data from your customers at this point. Everyone's just interested in shopping, 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 shopping. At the end of the day, money still moves, you know, regardless of whether or not we're in a pandemic, money will still move. That's just the way it works. Okay, so here we are. Kill. Uh, here we have um, some tips on whether or not you should kill your ad sets. 
the three points you can use to decide whether or not to kill the ad set. Remember, we're basically in a rush to figure out which ad sets can bring in the highest quality traffic and subsequent conversions. So let's say, for example, your ad set spent 80 Rand, um, has a high you know, uh, cost per click and has no link clicks, kill it, kill it. And obviously it doesn't, uh, this doesn't matter if you've had an ad to cart or a purchase. You know, that means that's a good thing. We want action. We want to see action. We, want, we don't want to see no action. Two ad set spent 250. This means, you know, your ad, you've been running this ad for, for like, you know, a, a good three, four days now and still has no ad to cart. Kill it. Kill the ad set. And then ad set spent 350 has no purchase. Kill it. There's no excuses there. We, we're rushing. We're rushing for progress. We're trying to spend as little as possible in order to gain as much knowledge as possible. We don't need the conversions now. We need the data. We need the data. Okay. Cool. So that's kill the ad sets here is scaling the ads. Okay. And here are a few signals, signals that you, that should inform you to scale your ad sets. Learn to calculate. One big thing is learn to calculate your break even return on ad spend. This is important for every business owner to understand how much money and exactly how much money is moving in and out of your businesses. Moving out as in how much are you spending on your ads? Moving in on it means how much are you actually gaining from spending that amount on your ads? You know what I mean? And this, you know, this is paid advertising. We aren't, yeah, like Alice said, I'm not even going to dive into um, organic advertising. Okay, cool. Next, oh, let's run through this. If the ad set is running for more than three days and has a cost per click under 15 Rand, scale it. Has a cost per million impression, thousand impressions under 180 Rand, scale it. Cost per ad to cart is under 150 Rand, scale it. Return on ad spend just has to be bigger than your break even return on ad set, uh, ad spend. And that should give you an, a, a good enough excuse to immediately start beginning the scaling process. Yeah. And we're going to in dive theory, into the scaling process with you now. Go on. So in theory, you know, the, if your return on ad spend is, is, is greater than your break even return on ad spend, you're making profit, right? Yeah, um, you're making profit. You're making yeah. money at that point. Mm. And, and that's a no brainer at that point, you know, when you're making money, what do you think? Ah, oh, this is working. So let's make more. Yeah. Okay. So scaling your ads. So you're finally at the point where you have your ad sets ready to scale. What do you do from here? Duplicate the winning ad set and decide a scaling method to move forward with. We recommend going from point one to three. So there are three types of scaling methods that we're gonna be talking about. The first one, which is, you know, we're gonna move from one to three as if we have already set up our dog collars campaign, okay? And it's working, we found the ad set, the audiences are working. Now, the first scaling, horizontal scaling. This refers to finding new audiences. The new audiences will be related to the winning audiences that you've found already. Examples could be related TV shows, magazines, celebrities, communities, and much more. Replace the old audience from the duplicated winning ad sets with the new audiences that you have found. We're testing again. We're testing with the winning ad set. We're testing different audiences that relate to the winning audience that we've already found and seeing what else can work here. Okay. And uh, yeah, just making sure I didn't <laughs> lose myself there. We're going to find out what audience works as well as our winning ad set. And after we have four to six winning ad sets, we can move to scaling method two. Remember, at this point, you've, you're already seeing value. You're seeing rever returns. You're seeing conversions. You're seeing a bump in traffic. You're getting what you want. Now, it's about getting more. So now, point two, vertical scaling. We have our four to six winning ad sets at this point, and we're going to scale those up heavily. Instead of massively increasing the budget for a single ad set, it would be less risky if you scale multiple ad sets together. So instead of pumping one ad set's budget from 50 Rand to 500 or 1,000, scale five ad set budgets in increments. 
from let's say 50 Rand to 150 Rand, five ad sets running 150 Rand for them. Best practice is to increase ad set budget every two to three days if they show consistent results. Okay, that's very important. And once, you, once you've started running this for a good long time, a couple of weeks, then we'll start looking at lookalike audiences. After a couple of weeks, if your scaling was successful, you can, you can begin scaling with this method. You can make a lookalike audience from the people who have actually viewed your ad video 95%. So just to explain that a little bit better, you can target it down to the point, you can find that person that watched 95% of your video. And what happens there is you can target them and people that are similar to them. You know, that's obviously someone who's interested in your brand and you can, you can find more people like him or her. Okay, and then you can also um, make a lookalike audience from people who have went to your website, people who have added to cart and or purchased. You can easily create it in your business manager under audiences section. Facebook makes it really easy for you to, um, you know, customize this metric, um, not this, just your audience list and your interests and things like that. Okay, mm. cool. So. Brad, just just to make every just to help everyone understand this, because I know it took me, uh, you know, a little a little while to to grasp my head around this. Um, the horizontal scaling is basically you have an ad set, and correct me here if I'm wrong, because Brad is the expert here, but you have an ad set, um, and horizontal scaling is essentially you've got your ad set. You want to find other audiences now that you know would respond similarly to the performance of this ad set that has worked, right? Yes, yes. Let's, let's look at it from this view, okay? Horizontal and vertical, okay? Mm. We've got the one winning ad set with the audience that works. Let's make more on a horizontal level. Let's make more ad sets on a horizontal level, but change their audiences. We change this one's audience and they're all related to the winning ad set audience, okay? But the we, budget we stays the same, hey? The budget stays the same. The budget stays the same. We don't want to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of rands just to get a little bit of data that we could have used just a moderate amount. Okay. So horizontal scaling, we duplicate our ads, choose different audiences that are related to our winning ad set audience. That's very important. And once we have four to six winning horizontal ad sets, we start scaling their budgets vertically. Yes. Okay? And I hope uh, everyone's with me on this because really, if you can, if you can execute this strategy correctly, you'll understand so much about your customer. You'll never have to look back on this ever again. You'll know Facebook exactly well, how to talk. Facebook has the most specific targeting structure of any digital advertising platform so far. Whereas it's, it's at the point where you can even use Google analytical audiences, the data that you get for Google analytics and your audiences that you're targeting. And you can even plug that into your Facebook, just see even more returns. Okay, cool. Before I go into a rabbit hole, let me just calm down. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> okay. All right. So final tips and best practices I hope everyone managed to keep track of exactly what I was saying up until this point. I'm really trying my best to give you as much value as possible. That is all we ever want in any of our keynotes. Okay, final tips and best practices. The market is at an all time high this year. Take advantage of the amazing situation you are in and start making moves. Times like these only come every 10 years. Opportunity is ripe. They say you can make the, the opportunity is biggest and you can make the most money in a recession. Now to have the money, if you have the money, if you have prepared, if you have the planning, there's so many factors involved. It's just whether or not you want to start making action now. Now, mm. number two, the data is important. As a business owner and entrepreneur, you're leaving money on the table when you're paying someone else to read your data. Learn how to read your data so you can understand exactly what is going on in your online businesses, uh, business and also help make decisions further down the line. You know, when you're talk, talking to your e-commerce specialist, you can chat to them and say, hey, I understand this data, this piece of data. How do I increase click-through rate? How you
you suggest. Okay? And then point three, never be scared to test new things in front of your customers. The only way you'll know if something works or doesn't is to put it out in the open and let the market decide. The market is, is, is who you actually want to communicate with all the time. You're trying to ask them questions and they'll always answer, you know, especially if you have a lot of competitors. It makes it even more fun because, look, the audience isn't ever going to drop. There's 7 billion people in this world and they're all looking to do something with, you know, everyone purchases, everyone shops, you know, the market's there. Now mm -hmm. get a piece of it. Okay. Now, now the fourth point I have is at the end of the day, it's all about the value you can give your customer. If you provide your customers with a lot of value, they have no reason not to come back. That's just how it works. It's called building a relationship. And that's so crucial because your customer must be your best friend in the mm -hmm. e-commerce business. Yeah, I mean, that goes to, that just goes to, you know, any businesses just have making sure that you've got top, top, top quality service. And, you know, you're just making sure that your business uh, or your online store is, is run like a, you know, any normal brick and mortar or it's the same concept, except it's just a new platform. You got to still provide good service. You got to still provide content around your products. You know, you, you don't have salesmen there to talk to people, your salesmen are your copy and your videos on the store. So yeah, just, just keep that in mind. That's a, uh, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful Excellent. that comparison okay cool so these are this is i think this is like um our last slide before we take questions but here that we is, have yeah. um a short bfcm game plan but before i start diving into this i just wanted to chat a little bit more about that strategy you know that strategy in itself once you learn exactly what's cracking in your brand and online business you know that data that you retrieve, you can start executing for your Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategies, for your festive seasons, you know, for next year where March and April come back or, or mm. June, July, where you get some market spikes and you can see yeah. conversions coming in. You want to make sure the campaigns that you're putting out there are targeting the right people. And this is the strategy that you can use today and start learning about that. Okay, mm. cool. Okay, so then we have our closing BFCM game plan. The strategy that you have learned is going to help you understand how to get the most out of your audience. And if you begin now, you'll be perfectly on time for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Don't forget what you've learned here. Data will take you to amazing places and answer questions you never thought you had to ask. Understand your audience, research your competitors and industry, target customers at different stages of their journey. Be active in your campaign management. Focus mm. on valuable content that works and create more value for your user. In fact, I'd even go to, as far as to say, give more value to your customer than they would ever give you. Because trust me, that customer will feel that value and they'll pass that on word of mouth, regardless in whatever way. And personally, we've also experienced this in multiple different client works that we've worked with, client projects mm. that we've worked with. And lastly, data is king. I think the whole saying, I think the whole saying is actually data is king, software is queen, and partnerships are gold. Hundred percent. I couldn't have said it better. I could <laughs> not have said it better. Okay, great. So that's um, that's the last slide of our talk. Um, uh, do you want to just switch on to the last slide there, quick? Sure. Cool. Here. Yeah. We were happy and more than happy to take some questions. Um, if yeah, anyone definitely. have some questions, I do know Cindy here asked if we can follow you on social media. Do you tweet these tips, etc.? No, we do not do that yet. But thank <laughs> you, Cindy. I think that is a brilliant idea that we should begin executing. Most of the time we're helping create value for our other customers and clients. We don't, you know, really execute these strategies personally for our business. Okay. Is there any chance of emailing us the cheat sheet? Yes. You know, we're more than happy. A video will be available so you can always rewatch it and you can just speak to Danica and she'll send that to you. But we're more than happy to also send you 
this presentation should you want to take some time to look at it again and just have it on you that's what we're yeah just happy just pop us an email at uh, info at honeywell.ca and uh, we'll send you what we have not a problem not a problem at all. So if any, if, if any of you guys have more questions, we're happy to take about 15 minutes to you know, answer as much as we can. Where can I access the video? Danielle asks, um, if you just speak to Danica, she's in the chat, she, she will be able to help you with that. Um, if you can just email her and she will send it to you. When is the be best- on YouTube on Friday, huh? Sorry, yes, what you can do is you can just either email me on marketing at youactica.com or just keep an eye out on the Africa YouTube channel. Um, we're going to make the videos live tomorrow. So obviously we should make sure that they're properly formatted um, and you'll be able to, to access them again. But we will send out an email to all of you with that information as well. So don't worry, you will definitely find those videos. Okay, okay, that's perfect. And then we got Prudence who asked a question here. When is the best time to start ads for BFCM? On the day, or a few days before. Alistair, do you want me to take I know, you, I know, I know you love answering this question yeah, because okay. it's all about preparation and planning. Yeah, so, you know, it really just depends on, on how you, are, you want to action BFCM. You know, as I said earlier, and, um, some brands are going for the whole month. You know, they're going all out. They're doing sales for uh, four weeks. So you know, it depends. If you want to... Um, start if you're only going to be doing your deals on the on the friday or and the monday uh then you know start advertising on let's say the monday of that week because you know you need to make sure that your ads are approved by facebook you need to make sure that um you know it gets uh, it gets out there and gets traction but also uh what we also um recommend is 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 doing some marketing a few weeks in advance in order to build a list. So you could essentially, if you have the budget for it, uh, put out a campaign there that uh, whose main goal is for lead generation just for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And what I mean by that is, let's say uh, you, you advertise you know, display ad that says, join our email marketing list, our, our exclusive Black Friday, Cyber Monday email marketing list uh, in order to be the first to know about our deals. So you could, you could do Facebook campaign, you know, three weeks ahead of Black Friday, Cyber Monday in order to gain an email list which then you can send out immediately come Thursday midnight, Friday morning, Friday during the day and throughout the weekend. That's how we would do it. We would, instead of looking to promote uh, Facebook ads during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we would use Facebook to get an audience pool which we can then market through different channels, whether it be email, Facebook or um, you know, just direct to consumer uh, SMSs or something. So it's all about that pool. You know, the whole point of the, the strategy that we've given you guys here is to, is to essentially come up with an audience list. That audience list needs to be so clean that you know that if you send out an ad with a thousand rand budget over the next two weeks, because you've cleaned that and you've worked on that audience list so much and you've done that data orientated decision making, you know that a thousand rand budget in this audience that you've curated is going to re return X amount uh, on ad spend, etc. So yeah, plan in advance, uh, but also do your testing now, like Brad said, try and understand your audience now before Black Friday. Um, get that Facebook audience uh, that you think is going to be valuable. Uh, and then, you know, a week before Black Friday starts, pump those ads to that audience. That's perfect. That's perfect. I've also just added in the chat there, um, our Honeywell's 15 point checklist to prepare your online store for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Also, you know, not just Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you can also use this time to improve your SEO. We have our completely free, it's completely free, our SEO guide on our website for you to download. Read that and I promise you, Alistair will vouch for this as well. We promise you, you'll know so much about the power of, of organic reach that you'll even be reluctant to spend money on digital advertising. 
Yeah. So, I mean, Cindy also asked a great question, you know, roughly how long does it take to streamline an audience? It's two weeks to go to Black Friday. No, no, no. So Black Friday is only at the end of November. Um, it's, it's the day after Thanksgiving in the States. It is an American holiday. So I think Black Friday this year is going to be on the 27th of November, if I'm correct. I, don't, I think I am. So you've got about six weeks um, to prepare for Black Friday. Brad, how long do you think it takes to streamline an audience? Remember, we're running multiple ad sets in the span of a week, one week period. That one week period will give you enough data to move into the next week's period and understanding and already capitalizing off the audiences that you've you know, found and worked. Especially if your website and your online store has already been established and you are gaining and making sales already. Look at your Shopify analytics, okay? And then look at your best selling products type and their product types. Pick that product type, your best seller, turn that into a campaign and ad set and start working off that. I mean, I is literally telling you this product, people love this product. So market it more or give them some value back for purchasing from it. You yeah. know, it's There's these a, small things that you can begin now to streamline your audience, mm -hmm. especially uh, you can even go as far as to now look at your Google analytics and look at the different audiences that they recommend are your audiences like an infinity, an infinity. Uh, um, I know a lot of people wonder about this. If you have ever been involved in Google analytics, there is a section called uh, affinity category and the affinity category of audience. That's an audience that is, is interested in your brand, but hasn't been introduced to it. And those people like that. Then you got your in market segment in market segment. Audiences are more likely to purchase. They're looking to spend their money. They just don't know where. And that's why you want to show them your content. And then that's the other, other categories doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's interesting because, um, you know, that infinity, affinity audiences and in market segments is essentially just, you know, the different stages of that pyramid, the consumer journey that we just showed you guys. Whereas the affinity would be the newly exposed and never exposed. And your in market would be the interested and your consumers. 100%. So, you know, Google can also provide you that information, which is just so cool. Look, the, the biggest platforms in the world that you can get the most value out of are free. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And also this, we just gave you and, guys a whole bunch this. of free information. This is, uh, yeah, we put all of our cards out on the table. This is how we would do it. This is how we're going to do it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully everybody can uh, gain some, some, some traction now in the next coming years, uh, you know, cause the market is just going there. This is the boom. This is the time to be in e-commerce. And with that, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, have a great black Friday, cyber Monday. Um, and you know, just to send, send us an email. If you have any other questions, we'd be more than happy to help. And once again, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for taking the time. We hope you learned something. Let us know if you have any questions or issues like Alistair said. And thank you to Danica, you Africa and Shopify for hosting this amazing power up series where we can look to give as much value back to, you know, the, the industry and the people that are involved. You know, we just want you guys to just, just make money and grow and just be successful, please. <laughs> <laughs> you that was absolutely amazing i literally have i think four pages of notes so awesome. you are always so much so and it's overwhelming how much information so to everyone relax you'll be able to access all of this information and definitely use info at honeywell.co.za they are an amazing team to work with so yeah thank you you guys for all of your preparation for your effort and for what is the most insane presentation I have ever seen. Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big compliment, but thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thank you everyone for joining and have a lovely day further and hope to see some of you later for Shopify's talk. Okay. Yes, amazing. Okay, cool. So do we, just end, do we just end the call there and that, yes. that's that? Yes, uh, that. Okay, cool. cool. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.